So if you want to make your photos look dark and moody, there's a really easy step-by-step -step process that you can follow in Lightroom that I'm going to share in this video. Now, if you stick around until the end, I'm also going to give away a free preset that I create, or I'll show you how to create your very own using the steps that we follow in this video. So let's get into it. friends, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com and today you're going to learn how to create the dark and moody editing style here in Lightroom. Now this will work really well whether you shot a photo on a sunny day or on a dark gloomy day, it does not matter. With the steps in this video, you're going to learn how to make any photo look a lot more moody in just a matter of minutes. Now once you're in Lightroom, the first thing that you need to do is consider the exposure. Now if your photo is too bright or too dark, you're going to need to adjust the exposure slider a little differently. The goal here at the very start is you want a general balanced exposure. In my current image, we have a pretty balanced exposure because the highlights aren't too blown out, the shadows aren't too dark, so I'm not gonna really adjust the exposure slider in this case. However, if you had really dark shadows or really bright highlights, you might want to adjust the exposure slider before you do the following adjustments. Once you have that base exposure created, we're gonna go through the highlight shadows, whites, and black sliders. For the dark and moody look, you have to actually bring down the highlights and the whites so that we're bringing down a lot of the bright areas to help enhance that moody look. So let's do that first. Clicking on the highlight slider, we're going to drag that down pretty much all the way. And that's going to bring back a lot of detail in the brighter areas of the photo. I'll go and bring down the whites as well. And that's going to do a similar thing, muting down most of those highlight areas. Now, if you go too crazy with this, it's going to look quite flat. So I like to sort of go somewhere in the middle here. So you are still darkening those whites, but it's not too, too flat. Now, the next step that we'll do is actually go and increase the shadows. This might seem counterintuitive since we're trying to create a dark and moody look. You would think that you want to decrease the shadows, but the problem with this is that as you decrease, your shadows will become so dark and there's no more detail left in there. So you want to go the opposite direction and actually lift that up so then we can still see all that information in the dark areas, kind of just giving our overall photo a muted look. It's not as bright as it initially was. Now, once you're finished with the shadows, we'll go to the blacks and then just drag that up a touch as well. Now, if your photo looks a little bit too flat like mine does, meaning there's just not a lot of contrast going on, that makes a lot of sense considering the adjustments we just made. You can go to the contrast slider and just drag that up a touch to add back a little bit of contrast. You don't want to go too crazy with this, but just enough so that your image sort of doesn't feel too gray, basically. Now let's go down to our presence. We're going to go and increase the clarity just a touch, and then we're going to also go to the dehaze slider and drag that up a little bit as well. The dehaze slider works really well for making little details pop a bit more in your photo, although it is meant for cutting through fog and things like that. It does work for just about any photo to add a bit of cool stylized contrast into your image. Now, before we leave the basics panel, the last thing that you might consider is adjusting the white balance. Depending on your photo and the style that you're trying to create, perhaps you want to favor a more blue or yellow hue, you can go and adjust the temperature slider to achieve that look. In this case, my photo feels a little bit blue, so I'm going to go and just increase this a little bit to add a bit of more warm yellow hues into the photo. So something like this looks good to me. Now we can go down to our tone curve, and this is where we can do a lot of great contrast adjustments. If you're new to the tone curve, I highly recommend checking out my other video that you can find up in the corner right now. What I'm gonna do is go to my point curve by clicking on this option here, and I'm gonna actually go and bring up some of the shadows. So I'm gonna click and drag up to lighten those dark areas up a bit, but then to reduce the brightness of my midtones and highlights, I'll click in the midtones and drag down like so. This is gonna sort of create a reverse contrast tone curve basically muting down our highlights while lifting our shadows. If you want to create a matte look, then you can just click on this very bottom anchor point here and lift the base point of your shadows. This is going to soften out all of the darkest areas in your photo and create a matte look. In this case, I don't really want that, so I'm gonna leave it set to its default value down in the corner. The next thing I'll do is go to the blues channel tone curve, and here you can add some color into your photo. By dragging up, you'll add some blue. By dragging down, you'll add some yellow. Again, if you're new to this kind of thing, make sure to check out my tone curve tutorial, which I'll leave a link for down below. In this example, I want 
want to add just a little bit of yellow to the highlights, but then I don't want yellow to apply everywhere in the image. So I'll click somewhere in the midtones here and drag up to add back some blue. This just adds a very subtle color difference between the two exposure ranges. I'll go and do the same thing in the reds channel. I'll just add a hint of red to the highlights and then drag down to add a bit more cyan to the rest of the photo. Turning that adjustment on and off, you can see how it makes a pretty big difference in softening out our image and basically muting down those brighter tones in the photo. Now to really bring together this dark and moody look, we're gonna go to our HSL panel and work through the hue, saturation, and luminance. Starting with the hue adjustment, let's go and adjust the hue to whatever you want. This doesn't necessarily matter for for the moody look. However, it does help to create a bit of a stylized look depending on which hues you choose. So I like to just select the sample option right here. I'll click to sample a photo, drag up or down to change that hue. In this case, I'll drag down just to make the greens a little bit more yellow. And then I'll go to the sky, sample that color, drag down just a little so that I have more of a cyan color up there. Now we'll go to the saturation option, once again clicking on that sample option. I'm going to click on the trees and I'm going to drag down a bunch. So basically the trees are going to have very little saturation. Same with the sky, going up to the sky, clicking on that, I'm going to drag down to desaturate that as well. To get that dark and moody look, the desaturation is a huge part of this process. So now that our photo is nice and desaturated, we're gonna go to our luminous adjustment and we're gonna brighten up our darker areas and we're gonna darken the brighter areas. So in the sky, I'm gonna click on that to sample the blue color and I'll drag down to darken the luminance of those blues and notice how it just makes my sky look more dramatic makes the mountains look a little more epic and that's just because we've darkened those down now i'm going to go click on the greens and the trees and drag up to brighten that area so that does the opposite effect it sort of lightens things up around there and things are looking pretty good now if you've noticed that things look just a bit too desaturated you can just go back to your saturation option click on that sample and then in this case i'll just drag up on the trees just to add a little bit more life back into that area because I feel like I went a little bit overboard. And then I'll do the same up in the sky as well, just adding back a touch of saturation. And now turning that adjustment on and off, look at the huge difference that we just created with our HSL adjustment. Now, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure to hit that like button down below as it really makes a huge difference and I thank you in advance. All right, let's get back into it. Now our photo has come a really long way, but we can go and add some more awesome color adjustments using our color grading tool. Now, if you're new to the color grading tool, make sure to check out my other tutorial that you can find up in the corner right now it has a ton of valuable information with some hidden tricks that you might not know about this tool that we won't really cover in this particular video anyways to use this tool i'm going to just click and add a different color hue in the midtones shadows and the highlights clicking in the midtones i'm going to go and add a bit of a warm yellow color something like this and then if i hold the shift key i can adjust the saturation and i'm going to keep it nice and close to the center so it's pretty desaturated. It's a very subtle yellow color. Now I'll go to the shadows and I'm gonna add some blues into there. So finding a nice blue hue, holding the shift key, I'm gonna make that quite subtle as well, but I just wanna counteract that yellow coloring. Something like this looks pretty good there. And then I'll go to my highlights, play around with the options I have. And for this photo, I'll just add a little bit of a light blue, still quite desaturated down there. Now, once your colors are selected, you can play around with the blending and balance to refine these colors. If you're unsure about what these two settings do, then again, make sure to check out my color grading tutorial. I'll leave a link for it down below. I'll drag the blending over just a touch and then playing around with the balance, I think I'll bring that down a little bit as well. Now I'll just quickly sharpen my photo here, add a little bit of noise reduction, and then enable profile corrections like so. Now we have a nice general edit to our photo and our dark and moody look is coming along really well. But we can go and improve this even more using some selective adjustments. So let's start by making our sky or our background look a lot more epic. We can do that by clicking on our gradient adjustment. I'll click and drag down to create a mask over the sky. And what I want to do here is just basically darken this down a little bit and add a bunch of contrast. So the first thing I'll do is just increase the contrast slider like so. That's gonna make that look a lot more epic and dramatic. And then I'll go and increase the clarity just a little bit like so 
And you can also bring up the dehaze option and that's gonna make that contrast pop even more in the photo. Once you're happy with your background adjustments, I might just brighten that up a little bit with the exposure slider. We're gonna go and now edit the foreground. So clicking on our adjustment brush, this is just a little bit easier since I only want to select this sort of road area here. I'm gonna go and paint over this area like so to create a nice general mask around this foreground resetting that back to zero there. And I want to just brighten this up a little bit. So I'm gonna bring up the highlights, I'm gonna bring up the whites, and I'll bring up some contrast. And the exposure I'll bring down just a touch. So I'm basically wanting the brighter areas of this foreground to pop more. So that's why I'm bringing up the whites and the contrast while decreasing the exposure. Now you can go and also adjust the blacks adjustment if you want to add some contrast back into there as well as the shadows. I'm gonna lift the shadows in this case just to soften things a little bit more. Okay, now clicking done, I might adjust the contrast slider just a little bit more. So now we have an even more dramatic look to our photo and now we have completed our edit. So let's go and look at the before and after. Clicking on the before and after option, I'll press shift and tab to hide all my panels. And now you can see the big difference between our two photos. We've essentially darkened down a lot of the highlights. We've made our photo look a little bit more dramatic. We've lifted some shadows in the foreground and our photo feels a lot more moody and dark than it did before but there's still tons of detail in the photo. We can still see the shadows, we can still see the highlights, nothing's too, too dark. And that's mostly because of the help of the HSL adjustment, bringing down the saturation and then adjusting the luminance to brighten or darken certain areas of the photo. So now that we have this edit created, let's go and turn it into a new preset that we can use later on with other edits. So pressing shift and tab to go back to all of our panels, we're gonna go and create a preset from this image. Go into our presets option, I'll just go to my plus and go to create preset and I'll call this to dark and moody and then to keep things organized I'll actually create a new preset group and I'll call this group to dark moody presets click create and now we can choose which settings we want to save with our preset. What I would recommend is only checking off the options that you actually edited here in Lightroom. So in this case, I did do lens corrections. I'm gonna leave most of this checked off with a few options unchecked. Now, as you notice, I don't have the graduated filter checked off and that's because not every photo will need a gradient adjustment. I just want the general edit. So then when I go and apply this preset, I can just go and do my selective adjustments afterwards, depending on the photo. So with all of this set, I'll click create. Now we're gonna have a new preset group as you can see here, dark moody presets, and inside of it, we have our dark and moody preset. So let's go and find another image that we can apply this preset onto. So now we have another image here in Lightroom, and I'm gonna just go and apply the preset that we just created onto this new photo. Clicking on our dark and moody preset, Lightroom will now paste all of our adjustments from our previous edit onto this photo, and look how quickly we've created that dark and moody look. Looking at our before and after, you can see how I've totally muted down some of those tones and made things look a lot more dramatic, and and moody like we were going for. Now from here, you can go and refine any of these settings as you wish, or you could even go and create some selective adjustments like so, depending on your needs in the specific photo. In this case, I might just brighten and add some contrast to the background like so. Now, if you want to download this exact preset that I just created, then you can do so via the link in the description below. By signing up to my email list, you'll get instant access to this preset, as well as I'll keep you up to date with weekly emails sharing new Lightroom, Photoshop, and photography tips. So now that you know how to create the dark and moody editing style here in Lightroom, and you have a preset to make the process faster, you'll be able to create this look in no time and start stylizing all the edits you post on social media. All right, guys, so that's all I have for you for today. If you learned something today, then make sure to hit that like button down below as it really makes a huge difference. And also consider subscribing to stay up to date with more tutorials just like today. Again, my name is Brennan from BeWillCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.